Today's top secret tip is if you want to attract the right kind of people for your business, you need to make sure that you have the right kind of culture in your business. Want to find out how to get a great number two? Listen to this episode. This is the Top Secret Wedding Podcast, where we share top secret tips to help you take your wedding game to the next level. I'm Annika, and I'm a wedding coordinator, enthusiast, and venue manager for one of the best venues in Idaho. I'm Chris, and I'm a DJ, master of ceremonies, and all-around lover of weddings. We're on a mission to improve weddings and wedding professionals everywhere. Today, we're super excited to have Jacob here. And Jacob used to be the, what was your official title? Assistant venue manager. Assistant to the venue manager. <laughs> no, no, assistant venue manager. Assistant venue manager. <laughs> um, at LaBelle Lake. So he was assisting Annika, basically, yep. uh, along with other people at the venue, right? It, it wasn't just Annika you were assisting. Um, so um, we're, what's that? Sorry, fun little quick tip thing is, Jacob was actually the first assistant manager for LaBelle Lake. Really? Before that, I was just doing it all. And then finally I was like, hey, I need some help. And along came Jacob. Yeah, I guess I do. I guess I kind of did know that. So let's get to know you a little bit. So, uh, and by the way, Jacob is no longer with LaBelle Lake. They had to let him go um, because he asked to move on. Um, they didn't fire him. He just, he's just got I know you let that out. I think I got <laughs> I know. <laughs> he's just got bigger and better things ahead. He's graduating school. Him and his wife, they've got an opportunities. They're moving. So we're we're very happy for him. And um, I'm sure he will be missed dearly. Yes. So. Yep. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? Well, first of all, thanks for having me on, guys. Yeah. Um, I feel honored. But um, yeah, so I'm from Meridian, Idaho, just on the other side of the state. Um, right by Boise. Yep. Right yep. by Boise. The better part of Boise, though. Sure. Yeah, no, I agree. So I agree. Um, but yeah, moved here to Rexburg what a year ago, a little over for a year school. Ago. For school, okay. Mm -hmm. um, about to graduate here in a week and a half. Super excited for that. Yeah. And what was your major when you when you came here? So it's kind of a mouthful: industrial organizational psychology. Um, it's wow. like, what does that mean? Yeah, I get that question a lot. So it's basically how psychology applies to business and business management. So basically glorified HR, um, just going more in depth and in detail with interactions between people, employees, bosses, things like that. That's cool. That's really cool, actually. Yeah. I don't think I actually knew that. That's Interesting. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so what? how did you come across this job at LaBelle? How did you find it? That's a good question. So we moved here, my wife and I, newly married. She found a job and I'm like, okay, we need a little bit more to survive. Sure. So can I let her show you up? Exactly. Sure. You no, know, it's a pride thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was just looking through all of the job apps, you know, everywhere. Like on Indeed? Yep. Indeed, okay. Zip Recruiter everywhere. Okay. You know, and then this popped up and I'm like, hmm, if this could be interesting because I've been working in retail for ever it feels like and then this assistant manager came up i'm like okay that could be interesting i didn't really know what it was sure. involved in it was just an event venue and so i'm like okay i'll apply next thing i know i get an interview and then i get the job so what were you looking for annika honestly i don't know if we knew exactly what we were looking for because it was a brand new position you know um you know we just had kira on this podcast and we talk a lot about fine tuning and finding exactly what you need and so this one we went in a little blind and we're like okay what do we need like we know we need someone who's organized we know we need someone who's comfortable on the phone and on emails but besides that we really didn't know we kind of just started interviewing people and we're like okay what do we need i don't know <laughs> <laughs> what so so that was your kind of your mindset going into the interview process, right? Yeah. Because you were kind of, you weren't sure what you needed, but you had these tasks that were not, maybe not falling by the wayside, but they were piling up. Yeah, no, exactly. It, it all started piling up. And I think a lot of it too was saying, okay, well, these are the responsibilities that we need help with, but we really were looking for someone who would kind of tell us what we need, which I think you did great at. But saying, you know, it's it's easy to say, well, this is the job, answer emails, answer phones. But 
there's so much in that negative space that's not listed in a job application that you want that applicant to tell you what you need. Interesting. If that makes sense. Almost like personality. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. So, um, what, how do I ask this? What were the things that told you, what were the triggers that said, we need to fill this position now? So honestly, with filling that position, like creating that position. Yeah, like what, what made you wake up one day and say, oh, I guess I need an assistant? Yeah. So honestly, I think it just is when I decided that it was too much for just me to handle. When I started noticing myself slipping on little things. Okay. Now, granted, a lot of the times, you know, you are your own worst critic and I am really hard on myself. Um, but still, I had set this standard of, OK, this is not acceptable for me to be slipping on these things. And, you know, of course, everyone's like, oh, it's okay. It's not that big of a deal. But, like, for me, it was a big deal. And so that's kind of what made me wake up and go, okay, I need an assistant. Gotcha. Because I cannot do this all anymore. Um, especially between LaBelle Lake and Ice Palace, there was just a lot filling up on my plate. And I think a big part of what kind of made us create the position as well is, you know, LaBelle Lake and Ice Palace started as one company. And then since they've both grown, we've split them. Right. But almost all of LaBelle Lake staff was at LaBelle Lake and the Ice Palace. And what would happen with that is once it was Ice Palace season, all of our, like all of us would shift to Ice Palace and LaBelle would kind of get forgotten about. Sure. And so a big part with finding this assistant manager for LaBelle Lake was, okay, this person is not going to have anything to do with Ice Palace. Their only focus is LaBelle Lake to make sure none of that slips through. So So it was really there was a quality and consistency issue Mm -hmm. because you had other things that you were trying to accomplish. Yeah. So you needed somebody to focus on that quality. Exactly. Was it scary for you? I'm sorry, we'll get to you here in a minute, Jacob. (laughs) Um, was Was it scary for you to bring somebody on to... I, I know for me when I have when I bring on somebody new and I want to send them out, I get nervous about yes. the quality. Was was there any yes. anxiety there? Yeah, I mean, I think I feel like a lot of it we were able to prep accordingly to make it not so worrisome. Okay, you know, we hired Jacob, I believe, in January. What do you mean prep accordingly? Um, so like processes, like and training and processes and. Because we hired him in January, there was quite a bit of time to get him trained accordingly before... Wedding season. Yeah, Yeah. before wedding season. And it wasn't exactly just throwing him into the fire and be like, hey, good luck, see ya. Um, You know, so there was a lot of preparation. And I think we prepped well with getting you trained up and going into wedding season. Um, But honestly, I think what the hardest part for me was was delegating to Jacob. Like I said, he's smiling. Um, <laughs> I can't wait you know, to like I said, hey, like I need an assistant, I need help. And then I am the worst at delegating and would just be like, no, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. And so Jacob would literally come in and be like, no, yeah. I'm gonna do this. Wow. And it was great. So what did that look like for you stepping into that position? What did you, did they, were they clear on what they wanted you to do? and? And how did you, because I think you came in and you you stepped up above what they were asking. Um, that's my, from the outside, that's what it looks like. So what did you step into and what was kind of your mindset as you were doing that? Well, like Annika was talking about, I mean, this was a brand new position. So there was a lot of ambiguity going into it. You know, a lot of, you know, learning on the fly kind of thing, especially coming into a brand new industry for me. Um, but I came in, you know, just with an open mindset, you know, what can I do to contribute to this team and when we talked about like as the training first started um what she expected from the position you know what she was looking for you know to take care of all those i guess behind the scenes kind of things so that she can focus on bigger picture i'm like okay that makes sense i see what i need to do and then when i saw her try to you know (laughs) do a little too much you know i i you know, you got to step in. You got to be like, sure. hey, this is why you hired me. This is why I'm here. And so let me take some off your plate so that you can focus on these other things. Um, were there, what were like the day-to-day tasks? Like what did 90% of your job consist of? 
contact with clients. Um, a lot of phone calls, a lot of emails, and then a lot of... For for what? Like, what were you contacting them for? Yeah, so for a couple different items, um, a lot of inquiries. We would get a lot of people asking about the venue, about pricing, about dates. Okay. Um, and so I would answer all those questions um, via phone call, email, stuff like that. Okay. Um, as well as, you know, I kind of took care of the financial... The invoicing. The invoice, yeah, yeah. 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 And so just following up with clients who had already booked and signed contracts, making sure they were staying up to, you know, with their deposit and everything, um, things like that. Was was there any part of your job um, that you didn't know how to do? Well, I knew how to answer a phone. Okay. So I got that down. But <laughs> as far as like what I was going to say yeah. on the phone call, I had no idea. How did you learn? That was an interesting process for sure. A lot of trial and error for sure. Okay. A lot of bouncing things off of Annika as well as other members of the team. Gotcha. But, you know, I just kind of picked it up as I went along because, like like I said, I was brand new to the industry, so I didn't know what, what okay, what am I doing here? What is what is the answer? What are they asking? I mean, Jacob so. started in January, and you had gotten married, like... Earlier that month. Yeah, wow. like the yeah. same month. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. So um, one of the things I didn't want to skip was what attracted you to this position? Because it's really difficult to find really good people, right? So what were the things that they were putting out there that you picked up on that you were like, this is the kind of job for me? Well, I was looking for, you know, taking a step forward, getting okay. out of, you know, what I'd already been doing, looking for something new. And looking at the um ad job ad yeah. on indeed you know it lobel lake it just screamed professional you know it oh, just it's so nice to hear <laughs> that's interesting yeah and so i'm like okay this could be a good opportunity to get my foot in the door to see how a small business works um you know be part of a team and i thought it was really interesting as i was doing more research on lobel was how family centric it is and that's something I really look for out of an employer because yeah. having worked in these large retail chains, you know, you're just a number sometimes it feels like. So being part of this, you know, very family oriented team who's focused on, you know, their image on what they want to get across, their mission statement actually holds value. Yeah. Is something that really drew me for that this job. Is super interesting. That's really cool. So, so there are some things in there that I think are key. Yeah. One Clearly, you saw that this was an established business. They were professional. They cared about their image, and they had, um, they yeah, they had an image, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I think that that's key because as a new employee, you don't want to step into a business that has no soul that that doesn't yeah. have a vision of who they are, mm -hmm. unless you're coming in to specifically help them with that. But that's a separate thing, right? right? right. So, so that's one. Two. Um, the role, even though you weren't sure what it was, you it sounds like you were confident that they had systems in place because of the way that they portrayed themselves. And you felt like this, I mean, would be a good opportunity for you to learn, exactly. yeah. um, but also be able to contribute. So, I mean, that's that, that says a lot about you and your that's team, really cool. Annika. <laughs> um, so I'm over here blushing. This is so nice. <laughs> yeah. But I, but I think that that's really key that like, yeah when you're putting your feelers out there and you're putting an ad out there that you're making sure that you're projecting the right things. Yeah. Well, the last thing that you want to do is project the wrong image and say, oh, well, we, we hold family really important and this is our mission statement and these are our goals, but then we don't actually live up to that. That's, that's like the worst thing you could do. Yeah. So. Yeah. If I might jump in. Please. Yeah. You know, just coming with my major and everything. Yeah. We talk a whole lot about this. And some of the biggest companies that are so successful, like Chick-fil-A and yeah. they value, their value statement goes all the way to the very bottom to interviews. Like when they do their interviews, yeah. when hiring people, I mean, that's part of what they talk about. Cool. And so I think that's a big part of when you're trying to draw in the right employee, you want to make sure that you present, okay, this is what we expect. This is who we are. And this is what we want. And yeah. I think there's a... A lot of times you go into a job interview and it's like, okay, this is just another company. But if you can yeah. hammer in, you know, like this, this is who we are. Mm -hmm. Will you, do you want to be 
like that. Right. That's that's really cool. It's cool. Yeah. It's very cool. So I, is that something that you guys sat down and thought about or it was just kind of a natural? I think it was just natural. Yeah. I don't know if I'm actually. I think that's uncommon. <laughs> um, but if, if that's not something that you've done, you should sit down yeah. and talk about the mission statement. We had a, a bonus episode. Yeah. That was really short, but it's got some really good stuff packed in there. Yeah. Um, I think it's like our least listened to episode. Solid. Um, <laughs> but it's got some really good stuff in there about yeah. setting up a mission mission statement and things like that, mm-hmm. um, which this clearly speaks to that you've done yeah. a good job with. That's awesome. To yeah. Hear. Yeah. Well, and that's just the thing, too, is, you know, I feel like it is so important to set your business up. I don't know. I just feel like, like you said, all the super successful, okay, not like you said, opposite of what you said. There are still a lot of super successful businesses that technically have a mission statement or goals, but it's like you wouldn't even know that looking at them. And so it's just so important to find what makes your business unique and live by those goals. He was stepping into a culture. Exactly. Exactly. That's cool. So that's really cool. I love it. So now that you're in the job, right? Let's let's take you back to that time. You're in the job. How did you support those around you, Annika and anybody else that you needed to support? How did you do that without stepping on their toes? That is a good question. I think coming in with the mindset of see a need, fill a need. I mean, just mm-hmm. being that kind of Swiss army knife, yeah. I guess yeah. you could say of, okay, this is what you need. All right, I'll step in. I'll do it. That kind of thing. Learning from everyone on the team and then using those skills to move forward and progress and so not stepping on toes it was kind of flirting with like the boundaries okay how much can i get away with you like sure how much can i push annika and say no i'll take that on and when to back off you know there's a lot of give and take there but i think Mm -hmm. over time that just kind of you build those relationships how did you feel stepping into that assistant manager position when there were other staff on the team that had been there longer than you. Oh, I was super nervous. Really? I'm not going to lie. I was super <laughs> nervous. You know, you come into like this established organization and you're the new guy and you don't know anything about the industry. But I think it, it was a really good opportunity because it, you know, humbled me a lot. Yeah. And so then I was more open to work with these people, learn from them. I didn't have these pre-established ideas of what, okay, this is what, like a tyrannical kind of thing. Like, this is what I want kind of thing. So I think it was beneficial coming in and working with those people, establishing those relationships, and then, but still presenting the, you know, I am the assistant manager here. Yeah. So I do have a little bit of authority kind of thing, yeah. but not abusing it, I guess, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. And the cool thing is LaBelle is still growing, right? Yeah. And so because because of that, and I maybe every company should always be still growing yeah. so that you can you, you shouldn't just be happy with the status quo. So you coming in and saying, you know, making judgments and, and nudging things one way or the other was probably a good thing. Mm-hmm. So for sure. Yeah. Um, what was your what was your favorite part of the job? I think my favorite part of the job was being there for the wedding ceremonies. Not the invoicing? No, no. Oh, okay. No, we'll put that. I mean, another <laughs> close second. Yeah, you know, close. But, <laughs> sure. No, I loved being there for the wedding ceremonies. I mean, the culmination of everything, like, I just got to see the behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. And then to be there when I'm helping out the team and to see, okay, this is why we're doing it. This is what we're working towards. This is why I answer all of these thousands of emails and phone calls, <laughs> yeah. all these logistics and everything. This is it, to see these two people happy, united, and I just loved it. I mean, there's such a special feeling there of just love when you get to be a part of that, even though, like, I'm some random stranger to these people, but you feel like you're a part of something, and I love that feeling. Yeah, it's that's one of my favorite parts about being in this industry. Oh, yeah. You do all yeah. this work, and then the I do's come, and, you're, and you remember, like, that's yeah. why we're here. Yeah. Uh, most surprising thing about about working in this industry? I guess just how much is involved and how much, like, because I got married, like, we talked about that same month. And so I'd gone through the process and then coming to LaBelle, I'm like, oh my gosh, I would have done things so differently (laughs) if I could go back and do it again. And so I think that was the most surprising part is everything that 
is available, like everything that is you can offer. And I think Lavelle did a good job of, okay, here's everything that we offer. We'll help you do all these different things, get you in contact with the right people. And I think that really surprised me was how much being with the right people helps you make connections to make your day perfect, if that makes sense. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, totally. totally. Okay. I'll ask this next yeah, one. Go for it. Um, so I don't think it's any surprise that the wedding industry is very female dominated. Yes. So how was stepping into that female dominated industry, but also workplace? Like as far as LaBelle Lake's team, besides our grounds crew manager, like mostly women. Yeah, like we were like we still are like ninety yeah. percent women, if not ninety five percent. So how was that stepping into that position? with so many girls it was a lot of fun actually i mean i really enjoyed it um i think you know both both sexes bring a lot to the table and totally where like some people struggle other people make up you know we complement each other very well and so i think being part of that you know female dominant industry yeah. is was such a good learning experience i mean you get to learn about you know how I think interactions, you know, that's the huge yeah. one was, okay, how can I approach the situation better? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm very analytical, you know, think logically kind of yeah. thing. And so, which sometimes comes off as impersonal. Sure. And so sure. working with Annika, especially, you know, seeing how to communicate better, how to empathize better and work with others better, I think was a really good learning experience. It's also very different than anything I've ever been a part of because usually it's, you know, pretty equal, but yeah. it's yeah. very... It was a very good experience. Yeah. So on the flip side of that, I remember that was something I was so excited when you accepted the job. I was like, oh, we're going to get a guy in here. Yeah. And like, okay, it's not really a secret. Girls can get a little hormonal and catty and emotional and you know what I mean. And I don't know what you mean, but whatever. I'll you take your don't know? I'm just kidding. I was like, wait. Um, and you know, of course, my whole staff and team, they're we're all great. It's not as much within the house, but even just like dealing with an emotional bride on wedding day and mother of the bride and just just a bunch of girls. It was really cool to bring Jacob in, who does have a little bit more of a I wanna say level head, but I don't know if that's the right word, but a little more different eh. perspective. Different perspective, yeah. a little more analytical instead of just emotional, you know? And so that was really cool. And I mean, it would even go as far as like, I mean, again, I'm a girl, so I overanalyze everything and yeah, but even leading our team meetings. I mean, when I first started out leading those meetings, I would be afraid to like cut someone off because I'm like, oh no, are they going to think that I'm being... Terrible person. Yeah. Like yeah. there's just so much extra drama. Like, oh, are they going to be offended that I cut them off or blah, blah. And you bring Jacob in and he's like, we need to move on. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, this doesn't have to be dramatic. There doesn't have to be all these little things. Like, so it was cool from that perspective as well. Yeah. Good job, Jacob. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, any, any pet peeves that you had with, uh, with wedding vendors or things that you saw that they did well that you liked? I'll, I'll start with the first half of that question. Okay. There's great. definitely, okay. um, some tricky situations that you get into with vendors. And it all comes. Did you deal with vendors? Occasionally, okay. yes. Um, and it all comes from a lack of communication. I feel like that with a breakdown of communication when the other side, like, because I know here at LaBelle, that is a huge thing. Yeah. Communication, communication, communication. And so when the other party doesn't reciprocate that communication, it just leads to a lot of difficult situations. And there were a number of times where, you know, there was miscommunication no communication and it turned into some big fiascos that yeah yeah we were definitely able to solve of course yeah. but it just <laughs> was it could have been avoided mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i agree with that thousand percent um the second half of that question that you know vendors that do really well are professional but also personable and so i really liked vendors that got to know the staff you know yeah. I think it's one thing to show up and then do your job well, but I think it's another f thing entirely to show up to your job well and get to know people. 
And so I think with some of the vendors that I worked with, a big thing was just them coming up and asking me my name, how I was doing, that kind of thing. Just establishing those relationships. And those were the vendors that I wanted to recommend because they reached out to me. They didn't have to. I mean, I was just setting up tables on the day of, you know, but to have them come and, you know, want to interact, that was huge for me. And I think that personal relationship is vital. That's so true. Cause I mean, like, you know, like I know you, Chris, and you know, there'll be times where I'm looking through a details meeting or I'm talking to a bride at her details meeting and she's like, oh, we have Chris Davis. And I'm like, yes, I love Chris. He's great. You know, and there's a lot of vendors, but if you don't have that relationship, it's just, it's different, right. you know? So. I mean, these are your coworkers. Yeah, exactly. They, they happen to be, you happen to only work with them once every, you know, yeah. three weeks or something like that, depending on the vendor. But um, like that is, that's part of the fun, I think, yeah, you know, I getting to so. know these different people. So, yeah, I, that's that's interesting. I hadn't heard that one before. Yeah, I like that's that. good. But I, I, I do think that that's important because you never know when you're going to need that person's help. Mm-hmm. And if you've been a jerk to them. Yes. Um, I mean, you might be losing business. It's frankly. true. So, it's true. Yeah, that's great. Um, okay, let's do a quick, quick round. Quick oh, round. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're going <laughs> to... Rapid fire some eyes. some questions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Say that. Um, and these are just like fun questions, right? Okay. okay. Favorite color? Blue. Blue. But like a baby blue. Yeah. Oh, baby. Okay. Blue. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, celebrity crush. This is a tough one, but I'm gonna have to go with Emma Watson. Dude, hundred. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. she's <laughs> definitely. <laughs> yep. Um, favorite place you've gone? So my favorite place would probably be Paris. You've been to Paris? Yeah. What? I didn't know that. That was cool. I really had to go. I went on top of the Eiffel Tower. I think that was my favorite place. What? That's awesome. Where'd you get married? Uh, Meridian. Meridian? Yeah. Okay. And uh, favorite wedding food? Oh, jeez, that's tough. (laughs) Oof. I remember, okay, this may be dumb, but there was one wedding that had just this gourmet layout of... Char- uh, charcuterie charcuterie yeah. yeah yeah it was so good <laughs> so good i don't know it's just delicious grown up lunchables it. love it all it's great yeah. favorite animal a hippo a hippo oh. yeah i love hippos they're vicious this is a recent development in my life but i love hippos my wife makes fun of me all the time but i think they're majestic <laughs> what's your spirit animal i know i always ask that always and i still don't have a good answer for it um, but you know, I think I'm gonna go with like a jaguar. You know, love it. I'll buy that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're they hide in the background, but then they can be pretty tough. But then they're also awesome. Yeah. Not to say that I'm awesome looking, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> we think you're awesome looking. Yeah. 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 Well, Jacob, thank you so much for being our uh, our guest today. Um, there are some really interesting things in this. Yeah. One, so. No, I am. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Great. So thank you for sharing your insights. We wish you all the best in everything that you do. And uh, yeah, thanks again. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. It was awesome. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Top Secret Wedding Podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review us, and we'll see you next time.